Uh, Richard Sandor is the chairman of the Climate Exchange. He's an environment markets leader. He pioneered the idea of turning air pollution into a commodity. So we're turning him to him now live in Chicago for some insight. Uh, Richard, these headlines, this potential classification at 115, um, do you see this about, uh, excuse me, do you see this announcement of classifying carbon dioxide as a dangerous pollutant ahead of Congress doing so? Does this uh, have an impact on your business right now? Uh, it does have an impact on our business, and it cites the inevitability, Margaret, that we're going to be living in a carbon-constrained world. And the debate will now focus on whether it will be a command and control one by regulation or will be a market. Do you expect an announcement of classification as such this afternoon to really sort of push the hands uh, of senators out there who might have some doubts about whether or not there should be climate change legislation uh, this year? I think business in general would prefer what is called a flexible mechanism, that is cap and trade, as opposed to a command and control regime. But in either event, I think it will have an impact on focusing the debate. Focusing the debate, but should that debate not result this year in legislation, what's the outlook for a business model like yours? Well, I think the outlook uh, for our business model is good independent. Uh, we have the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative, which, as you know, uh, Margaret, is the 10-state initiative cap and trade uh, that goes on right now in the Northeast. Uh, we have the Western Climate Initiative that's going to begin trading in 2012. So we see our business flourishing under either case, but I do think inevitably we have to see a federal program. Mm -hmm. We were just showing a chart there of uh, the Chicago Climate Futures Exchange. I mean, you're a pioneer here in trying to create uh, a tradable aspect to this environmental condition. But Richard, as you know, there's a tremendous amount of debate out there about derivatives, generally speaking, how they should be treated um, both in Washington and on Wall Street, moving them into clearinghouses, moving them in, onto exchanges uh, in, in regard to other aspects here. What do you think about any kind of change to how derivatives are treated and its spillover effect on your business? Well, I think the spillover effect in our business is going to be good. We have a regulated exchange. We've lived with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. We already trade acid rain permits, carbon permits, et cetera. Our markets are fully transparent, and there is a counterparty clearing corporation. There is no credit risk. And as a matter of fact, we had as members companies like Lehman and Bear Stearns, et cetera. So I think the world is favoring the transparent world, and mm -hmm. the world is favoring a credit riskless environment with central clearing. Do you think we'll see uh, further regulation of derivatives before we see cap and trade? I do think right now the Senate has on its agenda financial regulatory reform, and I think that will come. But I do think there will be, Margaret, a parallel path that we're going to be seeing. On one hand is a resolution of authority in the CFTC, SEC, et cetera. And on the other hand, we will be seeing movement in the Senate, now led by Senators Kerry, Lieberman, and Graham. And they're going to move concomitantly towards it. So I think it's a parallel path. Mm -hmm. uh, now, I'm looking at the Chicago Futures Exchange uh, figures here. You've seen open interest at record highs in recent weeks, up 75 percent from this point last year. What accounts for that? I think it's general education. We're seeing far more people aware of hedging and managing risks in the environmental area. The Reggie program has exploded. Uh, firms that are preparing right now for a carbon constrained world, trading other things like SO2 allowances, NOx, 
the utilities are getting prepared, mm -hmm. and I think we're seeing a whole world of interest in risk management in the environmental area. Uh, we heard from CFTC Commissioner uh, Bert Chilton, his forecast that carbon markets will be the world's largest <coughs> commodity markets in about two years. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would share his ebullience. Uh, I think carbon, simply speaking, will be the biggest commodity in the world. On our European sister exchange, the European Climate Exchange, we've got 850,000 open interests. Mm -hmm. For the, the viewers, just to put it in perspective, carbon in Europe is now bigger than soybeans. All right. Thank you so much, Richard Sander, Climate Change Chairman, Up Exchange Chairman.